Okay, welcome back. Um, early August, 1856. We passed the turn, and uh, well, let's have a look. Let's have a bit of a kind of a sit rep on what happened over the last turn. Uh, so, uh, the main fleet shelled uh, the fort at Cataro and also landed some hits on the kind of army corps that uh, seems to be sitting outside the fortress. Hussein Avni is now activated, and we've set him to attack and to clear the uh, the area around the fortress so we can kind of besiege it again. Took a lot of hits in return, but we landed some nice hits as well. Um, we're going to set the fleet on a defensive posture for the time being. Just hang outside the fortress. We've got a kind of screening force also. And also, just this, this, this serves the purpose of kind of bottling up the Adriatic as well. Um... One really, really good bit of news is we have finally put down uh, this rebellion in Lebanon and hopefully this will end any kind of uh, interest that sort of France had um, in what was happening here. Let's have a quick look at our relations. They're sitting at 25. Um, yeah, well, let's try a kind of um, a state visit once again. Uh, see if we can kind of uh, look to repair, heal relations a little bit with France. Um... Yeah, not good really. Um, but uh, that situation is resolved now, at least anyway. Uh, we're going to keep a brigade in place, I think, on the defensive posture. We've got a division. This was the Tripoli division, um, if I recall. So we're going to uh, get these boys back. It's Tripoli. Uh, we did begin the construction of a fortress there. Let's have a look. It's this force here, isn't it? Let's set to Riverine move and 22 days. It's fine. Okay, that's it. That's the only significant action, really, is the kind of shelling uh, of Kataro in the surrounding area and the action at Beirut. Um, beyond that, nothing too significant militarily. Now, the depot at Sana has um, mastered, so it looks like we've got some Yemeni rebels up north. Um, so we're going to... Well, I've already set Zarif Pasha to an offensive posture. His force is well organized. Supplies aren't terribly good, but they should start trickling in now, hopefully. Uh, we might look to expand this depot, actually. Uh, in fact, we shall. Yeah, so depot extension. That's relatively cheap. And um, Let's also look at what options uh, we can have. So we've got an anchorage. Anchorage upgrade. Yeah, we'll we'll do that as well, I think. Okay, good stuff. That still leaves us with plenty of state revenue and manufactured goods, so these are relatively cheap kind of uh, things that we can do. Okay, uh, one interesting development uh, in terms of our um, sort of scientific research then is we've un we now understand the possibilities of ironclad theory. That doesn't actually give us any kind of concrete results, but allow you know sort of uh, right away anyway. But it does allow us to begin to research ironcladding of wooden ships, which would provide us with one kind of unit, I believe, um, which I think is probably ironclad frigates or something like this. Um, that's really, really good. At some point, I'm going to be looking at a naval expansion, I think, probably in the 1860s, for a couple of reasons. One, the monarch that we uh, get in the 1860s, Abdul Aziz, historically, the, the navy was a bit of a kind of pet interest of his, and he expanded the Ottoman navy considerably. And, you know, sort of, uh, I wouldn't mind playing a little bit in character. I quite like Abdul Aziz as a monarch. I can't remember what year exactly he comes into power, um, but uh, our current monarch uh, dies, I think, of tuberculosis in the 1860s. Um, so when Abu Aziz comes in, we'll look to kind of, you know, follow, follow character a little bit. Also, it actually makes sense for us to hold out a little bit anyway. We don't ex want to massively expand the fleet with ships which will sort of fast become obsolete. And for the most part, our ships are still kind of, you know, uh, timber, overwhelmingly timber. Some do have a kind of um, a screw, uh, but they also have auxiliary sails, you know. And we're, we're in a period of kind of relatively fast changing, relatively fast kind of like uh, changes. And unlike... Uh, infantry units, ships don't really, for the most part, upgrade. Uh, so you actually have to rebuild them because they're just completely different designs. So we'll wait until we get ironcladding and wooden ships and we can begin to kind of uh, construct new ships and, and gradually replace the ships that we have, uh, but also expand the fleet. Um, economically, really, really nice round. Uh, 12 units of manufactured goods, 4 units of tobacco. Is that 4? That's 5 units of tobacco. Chemicals, uh, cotton and wool, that's good. Dyes, uh, Belgium is looking like a really good uh, 
trading partner actually. Let's have a look what our relations are with Belgium. Could have sworn Belgium was in Europe, yep, it is. Okay, zero. Hmm. Okay, let's see if we can get a state visit with Belgium. We're going to start improving our relations and then look for a proposed uh, commerce agreement. Uh, because we're supplying a lot of raw material for Belgium's own kind of verging and in small industrial economy. But uh, this is good stuff. And if we can kind of uh, secure a trade deal with them, this will kind of guarantee a fruits also. You know, so Belgium's uh, yeah, really, really uh, good trading partner. Fish, fruits, excellent. Cereals to Japan. Oh, no, I beg your pardon. That's tea for Japan. Cereals to France. Yeah. Okay, um, good round economically. Uh, so, uh, on our domestic market, then 67 units of goods for 207, 74 merchandises for export, yielding uh, a nice net of 198. That's nearly three, nearly 400. Uh, minus 100, however, for imports. So, imports now we're beginning to focus on things like steel. We are topping up the amount of supplies that you produce. Um, I think actually we're going to end supply imports now because. Uh, Yeah, well supplies, uh, we'll, we'll end supply, we've got, that's, this is really good to us, we've got uh, manuf uh, manufacturing of ammunition is, is increasing. Okay, um, so we'll keep steel, iron, three units of iron. I think we'll uh, decrease steel imports slightly, so we'll keep it at five units. Actually, scratch that, we'll keep it at nothing. Uh, we basically make two units. Uh, some of that steel, I believe, comes from one of our manufacturers. I think it may be. It's a kind of dynamic manufacturer, is it? Uh, let's have a look. Is it shipbuilding? No, shipbuilding provides supply and prestige. I think it may be military gear. Manufacturing. Okay, it's the arm shop, I think we have in Smyrna. Yeah. Okay, yeah, two units of steel, plus one from the kind of guilds. And we've just completed a section of railroad in Smyrna also. Um, so we've got, um, let's go back there. So yeah, our manufacturers here have just dramatically increased in productivity, which is really, really good. Three manufactured goods um, from the canned goods shop for two preserved foods, capital, coal, and iron. Excellent. And we've got a luxury goods shop, of course, being built now um, also. Okay, excellent. Yeah, good around economically. Uh, no major complaints or issues there. Um, let's have a quick scroll through other kinds of uh, war score increased by one because of our control of Dalmatia, I suspect. I think once we've cleared Catero, uh, we're going to give it another month or so, then we're going to look to maybe press an assault on the fortress. Uh, we have got Omar Pasha to provide support. Um, so yeah, the hope is we're going to pull that off because we want to sort of late summer, maybe September, October time, we want to kind of begin to wheel the left flank around and make a bit of a move um, deeper into Austria. Um, it looks like Austria now is kind of, um, yeah, is besieging uh, Venice or Verona, I beg your pardon, uh, looking to retake Verona back. Um, so they're putting a bit of pressure on the Italians. So maybe if we can make a bit of a move, that will kind of relieve a bit of pressure off of them. Um, okay. Yeah, that's all fine. Uh, let's just really quickly check our kind of exports and everything. I kind of did set them anyway. Just want to gaze my eyes over them, make sure that everything's kind of happy and, and good. And yeah, that's fine. Uh, 50 for preserved food will keep back. Excellent. 3% inflation. Okay. That's all good. Going to pop you on pause. We're going to pass the turn. And I shall see you in uh, yeah late August. See you on the other side. Okay, welcome back then, late August, and uh, let's have a little after action on uh, the last turn. So the only engagement uh, was this kind of army corps. It ended up being a marine uh, oh, a marine corps. It was actually about division size, or in fact less than division. It was a, it was a kind of brigade size. Uh, for some reason it was listed as a corps. Um, but anyway, that force was completely destroyed. 6,000 uh, men in a bag, basically. And um, the siege continues um the the problem is unless we break down this fortress i think any kind of assault is going to fail uh we'll stay on and uh what well, we'll stay on an offensive posture for the time being 
what we are going to do, however, is we've got a bit of a plan. Is we're going to begin the construction of siege guns. Because this is quite a serious fortress. And it's quite a large force inside. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, it's only 30 days. Um, it's a relatively cheap kind of force to build. And when it's completed, it'll be handy to have in any case. We'll keep it kind of in Smyrna, basically, as its sort of home. But we can move it um, using riverine points uh, to hook up with Hussein Abney's force. And that will speed up the process of basically breaking down the fortress and will allow us to assault it. Uh, we'll sit to a uh, defensive posture. Uh, looks like a, an Austrian cavalry brigade has kind of retaken Dalmatia. What we've actually... Now, basically, now we've destroyed this marine force and we managed to kind of destroy the cavalry brigade uh, that was kind of lingering in the interior. This frees up these forces that were basically guarding the, the border of Montenegro. So um, Osman is going to move his cavalry division uh, all the way... Well, uh, to Sarajevo, and then he's going to support um, a move into Dalmatia. He's going to basically operate independently using a cavalry division as a screening force. Um, I think that's the idea. We're also going to move one of the brigades. It's going to be a 10-day march. We're going to try and move this brigade into Dalmatia to take on the Austrian brigade there and see if we can't take that, uh, that region back. Um, if it fails, we'll have Osman... Uh, with his cavalry division in Sarajevo next turn anyway, and he can make a move on Dalmatia. So we're just going to use mobile forces, and the same way the Austrians are, start to see if we can create a bit of a nuisance in the interior, and uh, at least screen and kind of get an idea as to where exactly the main Austrian forces are, so that we can kind of, that will inform our move when it comes. Uh, we've got a cavalry division now that's been hooked up with Abdul Karim's force, a cavalry division also in Hussein Avni's force, and two cavalry divisions in Osman's, uh, uh, sorry, Omar Pasha's force. So we are kind of primed and ready to go, but I want to clear that I flank. I want to clear this fortress, first of all. Once this fortress is clear, this frees us up to kind of wheel around. Uh, we don't know what Austrian forces are, are in the interior. We know that there's an Austrian force besieging Verona. Um, but beyond that, we just don't know where they are. So uh, I think once we've cleared the left flank, we can move our forces in a configuration where they can support each other. And I think on that basis, we should be able to hammer our way through Bihak, or Bihak through Zagreb, and then up towards uh, Vienna, breaking one force off to secure central Hungary. That's going to be the idea. We are running out of time for a summer kind of move, unfortunately, because we're in late August. It's taking longer than expected, the siege. Um, I thought we'd have sort of done some damage uh, to the citadel, but that is not the case. Um... In Yemen, then, we can see that uh, Sana's being besieged. Uh, no damage this turn, but Zarif is now centred in, se in the centre at Taiz, and he's got an 11-day march to lift the siege of Sana. His forces are in relatively good shape. He's got supplies. That's good enough for us. Uh, so 11 days. There is an Austrian force now located at Hadida. I guess that's going to move down towards Taiz and Aden, and we'll, we'll keep the endless cycle going. But if we can engage um, Yemeni forces here and, and deal them a kind of... Um, Significant defeat, that would be good news indeed. Um, beyond that, no significant reports really. Looking through everything, uh, really good turn economically. Um, yeah, really, really good turn. So 12 units of manufactured goods, 4, 5, 6, 7 units of tobacco, 5 chemicals, 10 cotton wool, dyes um, to both Belgium and Denmark, fruits to the UK, Belgium, Britain, and uh, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 units of cereal. That's um, 80 units of merchandises for export, netting 214 plus 67 on the national market for 205, and only three merchandises imported. That is, of course, three units of iron. So that's a really, really powerful turn. That might be a record in terms of the number of merchandises we've sold for export, um, and also probably a revenue export record so far. That's really, really good news. Let's quickly check the trade balance. Let's see where that leaves us. See, despite uh, that that number of units of, of uh, tobacco exports, it still leaves us with a decent amount. So we're, we're in really good shape there. We are starting to build up quite a lot of textiles. Hopefully, at some point soon, uh, someone will bite uh, for that. So we're at 93 units of coal. We are going to have to start looking at coal imports, I think, very very soon, if not now. Do that. We'll do it in just a moment. Iron is 39. How is it only at 39? Okay, we're all actually uh, three units of iron, just eight enough. Six, seven, eight, nine. 
uh, probably with the completion of the railroad section at Smyrna that increases the, dem uh, the demand on iron. Okay, that's uh, we're importing iron from Germany, I believe, so it's another three units basically. That's okay. Um, That should mean that we're breaking even on iron. Yeah, that's good. So, it's nine units of coal per turn. And North Germany, again, is the biggest exporter of coal. So, we'll go with North Germany. We'll go with, uh, yeah, nine units of coal per turn. Well, that means we'll kind of keep us at about 100. <clears throat> That keeps us breaking even. We're going to import a couple more units of iron than we need just to build up a little bit of a stockpile. So there we go. We'll go for eight. And once we've got to about 100 iron or 50 to 100, uh, we'll make sure that we're breaking even every turn. That's good. Steel's good. Manufactured goods is good. Let's just really quickly check timber. Ah, timber's declining. By one unit per turn. Okay, that's, Chesapeake seems to be the best place for the, the, the greatest availability, anyway. Uh, for timber, oh, a lot of gold. Okay, that keeps us breaking even at 69. Nice. That's good. Mechanical parts is something we need to keep a bit of an eye on. Uh, an eye on. Uh, so yeah, five units eating into a five units per turn. So you can really, really see how much more kind of resource hungry the economy is now. We've got railroads. You know, uh, we've got those factories absolutely humming, and it's um, yeah, it's noticeable, really noticeable. But we're starting to see really good exports, increased domestic market sales. Inflation still at three ninety three percent five four seven two commodity stockpile. I mean mechanical parts are eminently available on uh, the international market, especially again North Germany, UK, really good export market uh, export availability in, in both of those uh, places. Um, yeah, we'll leave that as is. I think. Uh, let's just quickly check canned goods. Uh, wastages and corruption once again to so we'll turn conversion off <clears throat> okay okay that's fine So the economy is basically set. No kind of significant moves. Just to mention uh, that we, ha we are seeing nice population kind of growth now. We're seeing the establishment of a town of Izmit. Population increase at Sinop. So we're seeing really good population growth at uh, Mula as well. In the, in the south, we've had the establishment of a town. Um, yeah, population's increased in Smyrna, Salonika. So population growth, especially in kind of central western Anatolia. And also kind of northern Greece, we're seeing really good population growth. And that would increase as we develop kind of uh, factories and infrastructure in, in these regions also. Uh, going to put you on pause then. We've got a past turn. We don't have any significant military moves planned, I think, for the time being. We've got the uh, French force, okay. Let's really quickly check our foreign policy, make sure that we're not sort of uh, accidentally at war with France without realizing or something. No, it's fine. So it's still Austria, Bavaria, Austria, yeah, uh, Bavaria, Baden, Austria and their puppets, basically. Let's check who Austria is at war with. Piedmont, good. That's fine. And Montenegro, okay. Yeah, that's fine. So we've, I mean, we began the construction of siege artillery. Uh, that's going to take a month, I guess, and then it will take probably I don't know a couple of weeks or something. Uh, probably yeah, a, a week to two weeks. 
um, to move that to hook up with Hussein Avni. Once the siege is complete, we'll detach it and send it back to Smyrna. We'll keep that as a kind of, or maybe maybe even Constantinople, but we'll kind of build up a nice little arsenal in Constantinople of kind of units that we can detach and use temporarily. Once we have railroads, we can move it very, very quickly and readily um, to support any siege, you know, within a very short period of time. We don't want to keep it attached to a mobile field army because siege weapons are, you know, as you can imagine, quite heavy, quite cumbersome. They slow down the mobility of our forces, which we don't really want. Um, but if it, you know, if we haven't made any kind of headway, adding some siege artillery to Hussein Avni's force, he's got the command points availability for it, I believe, uh, would be good stuff. Would be absolutely fine. So put you on pause. We're going to pass turn, and I shall see you on the other side, which will be in early September. Okay, early September then, and uh, let's have a quick look at uh, what's happened. So uh, the engagement at Sana was successful. Uh, we've lifted the siege, inflicted three thousand casualties. Destroyed a couple of elements as well, a couple of regiments of native regulars. That's really good news. Um, yeah, pretty quick action. Uh, we can get a bit of a picture of the enemy force having engaged it. It's a fairly mixed kind of force. Um, but yeah, uh, lifted the siege. <laughs> I think probably <laughs> the fairly predictable. The next thing is probably Aiden is going to be besieged. But uh, let's hold on the defensive here for the time being. In fact, let's deposit the force inside Sana just to accelerate uh, the process of. Uh, regaining cohesion um, of this force because it's you know just marched from Aden all the way up to Sana, and uh, we'll then look to remove it from from Sana probably um, yeah probably late later this month and march it south to what will be a kind of lifting of predictable siege at Aden uh, you know if not we'll look to kind of destroy this uh, Yemeni force that's kind of bottled up in her diadem. Uh We could see another force in a Hadramut. Um, I guess that's the remnants of what we just engaged. Uh, has fallen back but anyway we've got 76 percent ownership over sana that would increase uh if there are no yemeni forces here um over the next fortnight 100 percent control in taze and aden um now that cavalry brigade uh that moved into split was defeated uh 600 odd casualties inflicted 200 and i think i could see also why it looks like a larger austrian force has moved into um yeah, has moved into Dalmatia. Not a massive force, but enough to be a, um, of concern. I'm thinking this might be our kind of cue, really. It's early September. The summer's almost out. You know, we're going to get like another month, maybe six weeks of decent weather. I'm thinking we could probably move without Hussein Avni. As long as we keep these forces, Omar and Abdul Karim, in a fairly close kind of uh, proximity to each other. That would mean that we're always going to have, I mean, you know, what we've got, 90, 95,000 uh, with Omar plus 80 or nearly 90,000. You know, it's going to be a 1,000 guns altogether. I think that's going to be enough. And we'll keep Hussein Avni in place for the time being. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to clear the Dalmatian coastline. Let's get Omar Pasha set to offensive, all out attack. We move into Dalmatia, then up into Fiume, and then around towards Zagreb, 16 days. And then I think what we're going to do is Abu Karim Nadir, instead of pressing across the river this time, let's have a look at any supplies. They're not terribly good, are they? Um, okay, we'll send some supplies to hook up with him. But we're going to move him anyway. Uh, we're going to move... Um, we're going to take a bit of a gamble. He's a fast mover. Four days into Bihach. And then we're going to go around the Sava this time instead of trying to cross it. Six days, and that holds a kind of continuous line on the Drava, basically. Um, now, Omar Pasha isn't going to quite arrive there in time for it to be next turn. So our forces will be temporarily divided. Um, where Omar Pasha is going to finish in Fiume, Abdul Karim Nadir is going to finish in Slavonian. But he's a good defensive commander. And as long as Omar Pasha, he'll be a day's march, basically, from Zagreb. As long as he can press on into Zagreb, and when he attacks Zagreb, he will have the support on his right of Abdul Karim Nadir. Once we've done this, we kind of secure a front, really, to then begin to move. Well, Omar Pasha will have to spend a bit of time recovering. And the idea is, hopefully, by then, we will be able to force the issue at um, Katero, move Hussein Avni up to sort of fume cover the left flank because we don't want forces pouring down into Bosnia from sort of through Trieste this kind of thing uh, worst case scenario we can just detach one of these core um, 
or even two divisions just to sit outside Katoro and move who, who, the, the lion's share of Hussein Avni's force up. In fact, I tell you what, with that in mind, let's move up the reserve army corps uh, that is sitting in um, sitting in Zvornik. Ten days, we're going to enter Sarajevo. And once Dalmatia is clear, we'll move um, Osman. He'll follow Omar Pasha. We'll move Osman's cavalry division up so he can at least screen. Fiume will be cleared, basically, by Omar Pasha. Fiume is not a fortress, but there is uh, an army corps and a division there. So we want to brush that aside. We'll move um, Osman's cavalry division up to screen a Fiume. Which will keep Omar Pasha's left flank basically covered. Uh, we'll keep, you know, we won't move him now because he's a cavalry division. It's quite fast moving. Um, and then if push comes to shove, if things get dicey on the left, we'll switch in the reserve, uh, the reserve core to basically hold the perimeter around Katero and move Hussein Avni up. And he, Hussein Avni's a fast mover. He can move through Dalmatia into Fiume and probably like no time at all. You know, seven, eight, maybe ten days or something. Uh, so that's the plan. We're going to begin the general offensive, but this time we're going to move around the Sava. Um, so the right Abdul Karim into Slavonian. Um, the lion's share of the work, which is what we want, is going to be done by um, Omar. Dalmatia, engage Mitrovic there. Hopefully he falls back into Fiume. There's a core there. Uh, maybe get to defeat him again. Last time he was able to fall back into Zagreb. Uh, so there's a chance here that we could engage him in a number of actions. If he falls into Bosnia, into uh, you know Bihać, then he's going to he's going to have to contend with Abu Karim of Deer. It's going to take him four days, um, six days. So he's actually it's two days journey from Bihać. The thing we don't really want to happen is for him to fall back <laughs> into Bihać once Abu Karim of Deer has vacated it. Worst case scenario, though, uh, we just basically move back. I mean. The good thing, that, the good thing here is that Bo Bosnia, or so Sarajevo itself, is uh, fort fortified. So uh, if he's defeated, if Mitrovic is defeated, force goes into Bihać, and he thinks, "Oh, great, move down towards Sarajevo." First of all, we've got Hussein Avni. We've got a reserve army corps which will be deposited into the fortress anyway. And either of these forces are going to be like a couple of days' march from from Sarajevo, so it's no major major problem. I think that's unlikely that's going to happen anyway. But yeah, that's the plan. We'll move the brigade back. We've set that force to basically uh, evade combat and uh, passive posture. Uh, Omar set to attack and all-out attack at that. And that is also the case of Abdul Karim Nadir. So yeah, the move begins early September. It's going to be a kind of late September kind of you know move really. And then hopefully it means that in kind of um, autumn, late autumn, early winter. Pending sort of half decent weather, hopefully we'll have a kind of bit of an Indian summer. We can maybe make a move into Hungary or up towards Vienna. That's the thinking, and then basically got to end this war because we don't want it to drag on for another year. You know, um, time's getting away from us a little bit. Um, in terms of economic sort of stuff, irritates me as hell when it happens. Um, make sure there's nothing else that I need to report on. No, the railroad edit, railroad is complete at Salonika. So we've now got a railroad in Salonika, Smyrna, Constantinople and Adrianople. And we can actually see the line linking up Constantinople and Adrianople. Um, at Cavallo, got 75 days left, 180 days at Bursa, and then 210 at Izmit. Good stuff. Um, decent round economically. Um, eight units of coal, nine, eight units of iron, nine units of coal. That keeps kind of coal and iron are where we want it uh let's just check that iron is kind of staying steady okay it's slightly increased now god knows why uh, oh no in fact we set it to increase didn't we um yeah so uh three four five units of tobacco um two units of manufactured goods decent around economically i mean not quite as dazzling as last term but that last term was a bit special but 64 units for 158 exports 64 in the domestic market 194 and I won't turn my nose up at that 80 units imported at 36 it's a good thing with coal and iron nice cheap stuff you know uh, so it doesn't kind of eat into our sort of um, eat into our private revenue too much let's have a look at options now for kind of uh, maybe extending railroad so we want to suppose a natural place for extension is going to be from Izmit into Zondalak where we have access domestic access to coal um, It's quite a hilly area, so let's have a look at weather. Mm. 
No. That's not on the card. That leaves us with 69. Um, 69 private revenue left. So I think we're going to have to hold out for a fortnight or so before we look to extend. Um, we can begin the construction, I suppose, of a... Coal mine's going to cost us, what, 649? And it's going to take us 189 days. We might as well begin the construction of railroads there first, really. Uh, connect Zondalak and Ankara up with railroads, and then begin the construction of two coal mines. Because the coal mines only take 189 days. And then from Ankara, we'll, we'll extend the rail line, probably get a bridge across the Kizil into Sinop. Because um, Sinop, is de we definitely want Sinop kind of hooked up with the kind of uh, industrial economy that we're developing as one of the major cities. Yeah, I think we'll leave it. We'll leave it this turn in terms of any kind of industrial developments. Um, there is a kind of last tobacco plantation option um, for Plevenite. It's quite expensive. Nine hundred eight, which will leave us with two hundred, I think. Um, yeah, let's just really quickly check. Um, 176, 211. That's cutting it fine. That leaves us just 40. And our imports are 36, aren't they? Yeah, that's okay. We can get away with that, I think. Um, so yeah, that's fine. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it's something that we we need to do at some point. Let's get the last tobacco plantation squared away. I mean, uh, these are going to be fairly low yield until we've got Plevna hooked up with a uh, kind of rail, um, and that'll not be too far off. I think once we'll focus on the hinterland, the Anatolian hinterland for the time being. So we'll get a rail line Ankara, Sinop, get two coal uh, coal fields kind of squared away in Ankara and Zondulak, and I think once we've done that we're going to begin to focus on some railways as a kind of military exigence I think so we're going to look at um, probably a rail line from Adrianople through to Sofia Nish and then Zvornik and then also we want a rail line we'll have some east rail developed by then we've we'll already got as far east as Sinop so we can maybe go from Sinop to Trabzond and then Ezerum to Kars so that's only three, basically three tiles of railroad, although in tough terrain, this is expensive rail. I mean, railroad in difficult terrain does cost rather a lot more uh, than it does in kind of, uh, yeah, I mean, mountainous terrain. I think I'm not even sure if we can actually build a mountainous, I mean, you know, we can, it would just be unbelievably expensive. Uh, we might need nitro, I'm not sure if we've got nitroglycerine, we might need nitroglycerine uh, and explosives first. I'll check if we've got that before we can build in kind of mountainous terrain. But um, yeah, good turn economically. Let's really quickly check the uh, our exports. Okay. I'd probably like to see more kind of textile shifting. Um, I kind of built a lot of textile shops because we were exporting loads. And I think we've probably run into a bit of competition. Uh, I mean, the more established industrial powers like Britain, the United States, France are already going to have a good export market for textiles. So we're going to be kind of competing a bit, really, with more, you know, well-established, um, yeah, sort of more well-established industrial powers. Let's have a look. We turned conversion off, didn't we? Okay. And let's just quickly check our assets balance. Yeah, everything's everything's in the green, so to speak. Three percent inflation. The hope here is we're gonna get away with that. I mean two hundred and ten private capital, hundred and seventy three operating costs should be okay. Uh, with 36 imports set. We don't have any other imports. It's just coal and iron. One of the, th one of the things that's kind of driving um, my anxiety about kind of really beginning an offensive without patter of being taken, again, is managing public perception of the war. We're down to 79. 
it's just going to you know it's going to gradually atrophy our national morale and the only way we can kind of basically um change that is by taking big victory locations <clears throat> so we're going to need to retake dalmatia but ultimately it's going to have to be vienna really um yeah we're just going to have to do it we're going to have to kind of risk it for the biscuit um we're not going to press across a river we're going to keep two armies to begin with in close configuration with each other and then we'll move hussein avenue up um these siege guns of course aren't built yet i mean it said 30 days that's 15 already gone and they're not even nearly built <laughs> so god knows what that was about let's quickly check the war ministry mm. Well, there's not, not much we can do with that for now. I mean, like, we, we could, um... We'll detach an army corps from Hussein Avni and move the siege guns up and hook them up with one of the army corps, perhaps. Something like that. Um... Yeah. Yeah, that's sort of all we can do. Okay. That's the economy set. Export set for the next fortnight. Both uh, Britain, Belgium and France declined our proposal for state visits. Thanks, guys. Um, sounds daft, but let's just go straight for a commerce agreement with Belgium. It'll probably be refused, but we have diplomats to spare, you know. Um, let's just quickly check what we have in effect. Relations of 76 of Britain. They're climbing again. That's good. We've still got our, both our commerce agreements here with Britain and France. Okay, excellent. Right, let's try Belgium again. And we're also going to uh, propose a commercial agreement right off the bat with Belgium. Here we go. It's a nice little industrial power in Northern Europe. You know, they've, I mean, they've already they're already quite they've already shown that they're quite keen um, to kind of engage with us economically. Um, so yeah, why not? You know, um, they actually have uh, merchants in the Med. Yeah, the Dutch do, or the Danes do also. Japan does also. Yeah. Okay, so that's a good thing. The Austrians don't have any kind of commerce uh, in the Mediterranean. They remove their commerce, which means they can't supply Cato by maritime means. I don't believe um, we're going to move the main fleet back actually, just to get um, back into Constantinople. Uh, partly because it sustains some damage from sort of counter sort of counter battery fire. Really, so we're going to get back into Constantinople and set to evade. Uh, because yeah, it sustains some damage, and we want to get some replacement parts. We already squared away some replacement parts for it, I think. Yeah, we did, kind of in advance. Uh, 73, 35, 35 for 20. Yeah, I'm fairly happy with the side of our, the size of our kind of reserve, actually. Light artillery, 24, 26. Okay. We've got two um, merchant marine sort of reserve spare parts as well. Okay, good stuff. We're gonna, uh, pop, I'll put you on pause. I think that's it for this turn. Uh, we've got exports set. I've checked the economy. Um, I have read through the reports. I always quickly check treaties to reply just in case I missed something. And 240, two diplomats. Yeah, there's nothing else I need to do really. I don't think. Uh, it's just check what kind of um, colonial options I have. Forty five. We want to find a way of driving up um, colonial penetration. Road network is the thing that'll do it, I think. Let's have a look. Forty for forty. Forty no we can't we can't spend any private revenue actually so no we can't do that that's going to be the key I think so we'll wait until we've got a bit of private capital 
and um, yeah, we'll start releasing small amounts of it to develop a road network in Qatar, Dubai, and Bahrain. That would increase our kind of colonial penetration enough to make these territories formal colonies. They're relatively stable. We've got a fortress being built, colonial fort, um, and we've already got one in Qatar and Dubai itself. So okay, right. I'll put you on pause. We'll pass turn, and I shall see you in late September. Okay, welcome back, late, uh, late September. Let's have a little bit of after action on uh, our kind of move then, the beginning of our offensive. And so far, so good. We can see two national morale points. Now, one of those, well, three in fact. One is from a battle, two is from uh, will to fight and national resilience. We've got a nice little boost there. So the first engagement then against Omar Pasha, or between Omar Pasha and Mitrovic. Again, overwhelming success. Inflicted 22,000 casualties, took 11,000, took, uh, took 11,000 losses, and took. Um, uh 900 uh yeah 900 prisoners um yeah take it thousand prisoners uh, that was the first engagement destroyed three elements and then of course pursued the force uh engaged it again inflicted a further 18,000 casualties and um yeah took 10,000 or 11,000 on our part so yeah two really successful engagements and Omar Pasha is now three days away from Zagreb Abdul Karim Nadir's move was successful uh, to Bihach. Uh, didn't completely take the, the region, but it took the town. We're going to move um, Osman, who's five days away from Bihach, to kind of basically sort of consolidate the, the interior. They did have a fortress. They've, they've put a lot of fortress troops into different areas. I can see now they've got some in construction hastily in uh, central Hungary. That's interesting. Um... Unfortunately, Abu Karim did not activate it, uh, but he's besieging um, this. It's not a fortress; it's just a very small, so like a, you know, it's tiny. It's a regiment. It's like you know, three thousand men um, at Slavonia, and so that's fine. We'll keep that surrounded for the time being. And there doesn't appear to be any massive Austrian forces. I thought there'd be a large Austrian force at Sombor or Pex or Bud or somewhere like that, but there's not. So that's really, really good. It looks like, for a moment at least, they're vulnerable here. I don't know where their, their other field command is. I'm guessing maybe in Verona. Um, now, the really good news here, I've already set into assault postures that I don't forget, is uh, the fortress at Ka uh, Kataro now is totally breached. The structure does not provide any defensive benefit. That's it. It's our time to move. There's still a fairly substantial force in there, uh, but we are going to assault and uh, look to take Kataro right away in addition to that they actually had some fortress guns their naval fortress guns placed in a, a split so once he's taken Katero he's going to move north assault uh, the town of split and then he's going to hold the left flank at um well at Fiume I guess is that Fiume yeah um yeah, that's the idea. So, um, yeah, once he's taken Katero, we'll just move directly through Dalmatia into Fiume, set to an assault posture. Um, we'll keep Omar in Zagreb, probably for a fortnight, maybe a month once he's there. It depends how quickly he recovers, actually. Um, I'm half tempted to put him inside the town once he's there. Three days. It's probably worth doing. Because that would just accelerate his recovery once he's there, sort of thing. Sonic, let's do it. Let's get him to enter Zagreb once he's actually there. Worst case scenario, if an Austrian force besieges it, I don't think they would take it. It is a bit risky, isn't it? But what's the likelihood of an Austrian force being set to assault posture, moving into a town they currently already control? Um, I don't think they'll do it, so no. Uh, we'll sit to. They're not force march. That's 85% chance we don't want to do that. Yeah, we'll set to enter the structure. That means three days, 11 days of rest inside Zagreb. Um, that should mean that very, very quickly um, we'll be in a position to conduct offensive maneuvers, possibly in early October, possibly all the way out to Vienna. Possibly. We'll see. And, um, yeah... At the same time, of course, we'll move up uh, Hussein Avni to kind of cover the left flank, maybe move him up, cover Zagreb, I don't know. Um, but yeah, um, Albert Cream is not activated anyway. But yeah, good round, good round uh, militarily, happy with all of that. Uh, we got a national morale point out of it, which is what we want. Didn't actually take Dalmatia, um, 
because the, we didn't realize there's a force actually inside the town so okay so tobacco plantation being built we've kept inflation down to three percent that's good so we didn't have to borrow any money that turn that was a bit of a kind of running anxiety irritating me this these siege guns are now built but they're not required but they might be required again in the future it doesn't look like vienna or central hungary is fortified so this could be terribly exciting if it comes off we'll see okay now one interesting development is we understand um, how to harness the possibility of steel rails um, again it's only a kind of a theoretical development but it allows us to develop steel rails implementation which increases transport efficiency by 55 percent in those regions where we have railroads so i guess I, I'm, I'm guessing original railroads made up iron or something like this um so yeah it means that we have much more durable uh i'm guessing much more durable rail lines or cheaply manufactured rail lines or something like this um but whatever the weather it's an increase in uh production efficiency for those areas where we have railroads good turn economically uh i mean Importing coal, iron, um, was it four units, three units, three, two, three, yeah, five units of tobacco, two manufactured goods, yeah, decent. Export 72 merchandises for 178, 64 for the domestic market for a 198, and uh, yeah, good stuff. Uh, imports th 18 units for 36, nice, really, really good term. Yeah, no complaints, sir. Let's really quickly check Aiden. Okay, now we kind of did this trick in Aiden, and we? we deposited Zaif. Yeah, he's activated and completely recovered. That's really good news. How long would it take him now, curiosity? 11 days. And we could move. 35% chance force march. We'll move to Hadida, engage the force that's kind of trapped there, then move down towards Taiz, spend you know a fortnight recovering at Taiz, and then we'll move south to kind of lift the siege at Aden. We don't want to keep just going backwards and forwards. It'd be nice if we can actually get something out of the transit sort of thing. So kind of dealing with Hadida might be sort of worth doing. We'll put a colonial fort there, and um, the colonial fort, yeah, outpost being built at uh, Alba. Right, let's get some road development at um, road network. So it is five minutes manufactured goods, four private capital, or 40 private capital, 40 state revenue. That's fine. We'll start with Qatar. That's going to take 12 turns. So 24 weeks, basically. So the half a year, isn't it? Something like that. No, only weeks in a year, 52. Um, Surprised it took the fleet that long or to delay two days away from Constantinople. See if Marmara is mit. We don't know. Nah, we don't even have to go to Constantinople. There we go. Two days, fine. We're going to set the um, fleet to offensive posture this turn because if we assault Katero, there are some Austrian ships there. They might try and flee a cruiser division. So we'd like to engage that. There's a chance we might capture it. If they don't try and move it out, um, the ships are in port when the town falls, we might get them. Um, if they're in a decent state, if they're constructed, we'll send them to Constantinople. Um, free ships for the win. Okay, let's check our exports real quick. Again, not selling the kind of textiles I'd like to see. Might as well keep 40 of the domestic market out of it. Okay, that's all satisfactory. Let's check our assets balance real quick. Uh, 
average satisfaction has dropped by 1%. I'm sure it's 93. Let's check the census really quickly. Make sure there's no kind of. Um, So the areas of popular enthusiasm for the government then in Smyrna, uh, Manatai, Kaisari, Akari. Akari is um, Salonika. Population content of Adrianople. Okay, that's good. What's Constantinople then? And there it is. Indifferent. It's a shame it wasn't sort of popular enthusiasm that it, that it significantly increased productivity. Uh, population growth is highest where? Sinop. Yeah. Sinop is an interesting yeah, interesting site for us. Um, Izmit, Ankara. It's basically a Turkish province is where our population is growing the quickest. I thought we would have, would have got a couple of points on uh, the population at Constantinople by now. It's a... Uh, 10 city, I mean it's the biggest population of course we can see, it's the, by far the biggest population, 18% um, uh, Jewish, 70% Turkish 25% Greek okay. there are some interesting ahistorical things that are just based on assumptions, so for example Salonika, Salonika at this time in the 19th century and you can go to Wikipedia and check it out uh, was mostly populated by Turks, um, it was um yeah, I think it's just an assumption that it was kind of a Greek city, you know. Um, but no, it was it was mostly ethnically Turkish during this time, but they, they assumed that it was Greek, which is a bit irritating, but there we go. Um, I don't know what the kind of ethnic composition of the rest of the Balkans was, but I was surprised to read that Salonika was predominantly Turkish until really the, the, the period of the Republic of Greece, I guess, following the collapse of the Ottoman Empire. The Greeks ensured that it sort of was much more of an ethnically homogenous kind of city but anyway um, right that's everything set I think that's our uh, economy set we'll pass turn and once we get to early October we'll look at the kind of results if there's a major cliffhanger I might pass another turn if not um, or we'll leave it in uh, early October um, but uh, the idea is that this time round we would have secured to grab <clears throat> Yeah, I'm wondering whether to set this to a salt posture because if there's a force in Zagreb, <laughs> we'll be sitting outside the town. But anyway, we'll, we'll sit outside the town if need be. Um, the main thing is we want to take Kata and secure the left flank and then move up. Right, the economy's set. Um, every All demands are being met. We're going to pass turn and I shall put you on pause and see you in early October. Okay, welcome back then. Early October. And let's have a gander at um, how this went. Kato hasn't quite fallen. But it was successful. We get a national morale point from it as well, just because of the extent of, of the, the enemy loss. I mean, uh, we destroyed a number of elements, they inflicted 26,000 casualties, uh, also 150 companies, which is 100 men per company. 150 is um, 15,000, I think. Uh, 15,000 prisoners. Incredible. But not quite enough. I think uh, the, the force is kind of in Qatar is bolstered by a significant naval presence. Um, we suffered fairly heavy casualties and lost, for example, H two HQ core asset units, which is uh, incredible, plus two artillery field artillery, uh, so two field artillery regiments, which is incredible. Um, what we are going to do, because we've suffered heavy, heavy losses, Hussein Avi is not activated, and we can see a, a Austrian force beginning to assemble at Istria. Um, we are going to bring the reserve. We're going to bring a reserve army corps. It'll take him seven days. Them seven days. We're going to switch out Ismail Pasha's corps, which can suffer considerable damage. And we're going to move that force back. It's going to take them nine days. We'll get that to enter the structure at Sarajevo. Now the the depot has finished ex being expanded at Zvornik also at Sarajevo. We're going to go ahead and expand the depots again. Uh, so depot extension, 27 state revenue, uh, 5, yeah that's fine, that's good. Now we're going to look at some something a bit more long term here. Uh, that is going to be a fortress upgrade. 
Let's have a look at fortress extension options. Yeah, we're gonna have to we're gonna extend the fortress at cars. And we're gonna begin the construction of a pre-industrial fortress at Van. What are we gonna put to me? And I think also <clears throat> fifty four state revenue. We've got manufactured goods and steel enough, and we're going to fortress extension. Yeah, Fortress Extension at Smyrna. Uh, that'll do for now. That'll do for now. So we have some state revenue and manufactured goods that's, that's worth kind of uh, investing in our kind of defense infrastructure. Right. Yeah, a, a bit of a messy turn. Nothing really bad has happened, but Hussein Avni is not activated. He's not really prepared to move. He's has suffered some really heavy losses, including the HQ. Q units of both army corps. Um, Ismail Pasha is going to stay in his stack and he'll take command of the reserve army corps that's kind of moving in. It's going to take seven days uh, and then it'll get, I guess, another seven days rest before he's going to be in a position to assault Katara and finish the job there. That's a shame, basically. Um, we were hoping to take that sort of within a fortnight and that leaves us in a bit of a tricky situation with an open left flank because he's behind schedule. We've got Omar Pasha really kind of out on a limb at Zagreb. Uh, so Zagreb, it turns out, has forces. Let's have a look. Um, so he, yeah, this is Zagreb. Some forces were sitting outside Zagreb. We rushed aside a force, really, inflicting 15,000 casualties. Took 15,000 casualties. Um, this was a cavalry brigade. Took 1,500 prisoners. And this was successful, completely, uh, yeah, completely wrapped up this kind of Yemeni force that had died. They're not activated now, predictably. But um, I think we'll um, okay. We'll keep that force in Herdana for the time being. How long will it take them to get to Taiz? Can't force much. We'll move to Taiz because we need to reorganize there anyway and lift the siege at um, lift the lift the siege at uh, Yemen. Structure's intact. That's good. Right. Yeah. I mean, nothing really bad has happened, but Omar Pasha is now in a bit of a vulnerable position. Although, if he is engaged, he will be supported by Abu Karim's force on his right. And no offensive forces have emerged in Hungary um, or sort of Transylvania or anything. So they are still defensive forces, which is good. We're going to set Omar Pasha to assault uh, the town at Zagreb and take the town. And hopefully this large force will stay put for the time being. <clears throat> the worry is it makes a big move on Zagreb. Um... Yeah, we'll set to assault for the time being. Eight days. One day. Mm. Yeah, it feels a bit unbalanced. Doesn't feel quite right. But um, I'm going to have a think. I think we will end it here because I need to have a bit of a think about this, about how where to place these forces. And what to do because this is a little bit of a dangerous moment because Hussein Avni's kind of like dragging his feet a bit. Um, yeah, it's just left us in a bit of you know with a wide open left. Plus the spearhead, Omar Pasha's force, is looking a little bit worse for wear and dishevelled. The weather's about to turn. It's early October. Um, 
and there's presumably a large Austrian force in sort of Venezia as well, besieging Verona. So, hmm, stop doing that. Okay, I'll have a think about it. We need to have a think about what to do next. Um, let's have a flick through the other reports. Finish building, yes, the depot extension at Devonic we know about. The fort at Devonic is done. Anchorage upgrade is done. Good. Yeah, Ismail Pasha's blamed. It's because he suffered really heavy losses in the, the assault. Yeah, that force that we're sending back. I mean, he lost most of his command, for Christ's sake. And he's assaulting a fortress, which, you know, is completely breached. Anyway. Right. It looks like a decent enough round economically. Um, oh, we're selling some cattle. That's good. Tobacco. Consistent, of course. Not much other way of manufacturing goods, but okay. 66 export for 169 domestic market sales 65 for 194 imports 48 and our imports for coal and iron um, plus tea and timber mm. now the Belgians accepted this time uh, the proposed visit which is good that means our relations had improved but didn't really respond um, yeah, it didn't respond to the kind of commerce agreement. But I think we're going to keep pestering them, keep pressuring them. So relations will improve uh, with them. Let's have a look what we've got. Well, we've got our diplomats now, so we'll have to wait until the end of the year until we've kind of uh, have the resources to do it. So, yeah, I should see our relations improve. We're at 76 19 with France. They're still going down. Damn. Let's have a quick look at what France is. Uh... I mean, we've got a commerce agreement with them. They've got with Siam and Piedmont also. Right, we're with Parma. Okay. Yeah, nothing to worry about. No concerns with uh, any of those reports. So yeah, I'm going to leave it there. And I need to have a bit of a think about whether or not we have a temporary kind of fallback. Maybe even a ban into grab. Get, um, maybe get kind of Omar back into Behatch, for example. Where he can still be supported by Abdul Karim. And maybe even place him inside the town or something like that. Um... He just feels a bit exposed. That way, we don't have a kind of yawning gap, really. Um, hmm. Or even how long would it take him? Seven days. Need to have a think about it. Whether to keep him into grab, get into Dalmatia, get him to come back to Bihatch, or even maybe to Sava or something like this maybe even you know it was 15 days they point to it marching in for 15 days it's just going to sort of uh, make his force even worse isn't it so yeah we need to have a bit of a think and also what to do about these territories that we've taken it makes sense to actually devastate the territories I mean this is an Austrian territory we're never going to have it we might as well just burn everything that's there sort of thing um, and that goes with every Austrian territory that we control frankly uh, so for example Slavonian and yeah set a bit of a precedent and we'll do that once we move into the kind of hinterland as well if we take vienna you know we'll just devastate the city we'll burn everything down maybe leave the depot because we actually might need to use the depot we'll look what's in the depot while we're there but destroy their military college for example would be rather good and yeah kind of hobble them um yeah destroy their mines we won't better go any further north than we prague's not defended actually i mean prague doesn't have a, a fortress or anything like this but uh yeah, destroy their minds, everything. Make just turn them sort of uh, turn back the clock a bit for them, you know. Um, make them more dependent on us as well. If we destroy their manufacturing, good chance they might start importing manufactured goods from us because they'll be, a, you know, they won't be able to fulfil their own, uh, sort of sort of domestic market demands. 
Um, that said, we need to actually do that first. We need to actually take these kind of towns and cities. There's no point in talking about it. But um, yeah, I'm going to leave it there. Have a bit of a wee think about what to do next. We'll leave it in early October. So I think um, I'll pick up in early October then. I won't pass turn. I'll have a think about what to do and then sort of uh, can include you in on that. Uh, once I made a decision, so uh, we'll basically rejoin where we're leaving off in early October, and uh, think about how to sort of develop the plan for you know the invasion of uh, of Austria, of Hungary, and Austria. Uh, so yeah, see you next time in early October. Thanks for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one.